Hello YouTube, uh, today we're going to go over some basic antiderivative practice problems and our main focus for today is going to be on uh, the general term for antiderivatives. Now the general term, if you recall, is when you find the antiderivative, capital F of X, and it's whatever, you have the plus C at the end, meaning that you can add any constant, um, whether it's a whole number or even something like E, which is 2.71818. Remember that, guys. Uh, it's very important. So um, that's why it's called general, because it could be anything here, and then when you have this, or whatever you have, and then when you have the C, it could be anything in general. Okay, so anyway, first problem, we got 4x squared uh, minus x, and we want to find capital F of x. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at this portion right here. So as you know, to find the antiderivative, you would have to, oops, uh, something went wrong, but it's back now. Okay, you'd have to add 1 to the exponent, so you have x cubed. Now, when you want to find out what the coefficient is, uh, first you can check your work by taking the derivative of x cubed. You get 4, or, whoops, you get 3x squared, right? And you're thinking, okay, how do I get from th to 3x squared to 4x squared, right? Okay, well, how would I get rid of the 3? Well, I put the 3 down here. These would cancel later, right? So, okay, but I still need the 4. Oh, look, I just put it right here, and... Pretty much, you get the threes to cancel, and you're left with the four. So that's how you can check your work there. So we'll put the four in there. So you have four thirds x cubed. Um, so that's why you have to multiply by four thirds. Um, and now you say, okay, how do I uh, take the antiderivative of x? Well, that would be x squared, right? But you have to get rid of the um, the when you take the derivative, you would get 2x squared, or 2x, right? So you have to get rid of the um, 2 here. So you'd have to divide by 2, or divide by 1, or multiply by 1 half. And um, that's how you know that you have 1 half here. Okay, so that's the answer for capital F of x, which is the antiderivative for this function here. Okay, moving on. We have another function, f of x is equal to e to the negative 3x. Uh, now, if you know your derivative of e to the x is always the same. So if you have the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So same thing when you go backwards, but you kind of have to think about this a little bit. Uh, whether you use the formula or whether you look at it analytically or thinking about it, um, you would probably start here. You say, okay, I know it's the same. But if I were to take the derivative, and you know using the chain rule, if you were to take the derivative of this, because this is your guess, and you take the derivative, um, you would get negative 3e to the negative 3x, right? Well, you don't want that. You want this space to be blank. There needs to be a 1 here. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to divide by negative 3, right? Or multiply by negative 1 third, correct? So, if you do that, these cancel, and you're left with that here, and then negative, negative, positive, yeah, okay, you get it. So, that is why here we have, you multiply by negative one third. And that, my friends, is the answer for the antiderivative of f of x. Okay, uh, hopefully that was clear. Uh, it's also a formula. If you want to look that up, you can. Uh, next, we have f of x equals 1 over 1 plus 2x. Now, this one's kind of tricky. You have to think about it. There's many different, or there's two main methods I am kind of looking at right now that you could do here. Um, I'll just go over the new method. Um, so, if there's come something called u sub, I don't know if you guys have learned it, but it's a substitution method. Um, and I'm going to make u to be 1 plus 2x. Okay, and the derivative of u, or du would be the derivative of what's above, and that would be 2, right? Yeah, that seems right. Now it would be 1 half because, wait a minute, give me a second. Okay, anyway, um, so you have now 1 over u du, and you're taking the antiderivative, which that's the symbol for antiderivative, it's the integral. 
um, but this is not a definite integral. So if you know what the antiderivative of 1 over u is, you should recognize it to be the ln of the absolute value of u. Now that's something you kind of just have to memorize. I talked about it in another one of the videos of mine of why it is like that. Um, so now you just have to plug in, well, you'd have plus c here. Oh, did I do plus c's here? Ooh, bad me. Bad me. Plus c. Plus c. And I even talked about it right here that we were talking about the general term. Plus c. C, you gotta, haha, ha, c. Okay. You gotta watch out for that, uh, especially on a test. So, um, now you just plug in uh, u for, um, plug in what you have there for u. So that is 1 plus 2x, right? And um, make sure it's absolute value, plus c. But you know you have to take the derivative of what's on the inside, so what's the, the or the rule would be, you'd have to bring the 1 half out. So then you just come 1 half here, that's capital F of x. And that is your answer for this problem. Got to remember that C. Okay. Uh, three more. So, this is another function. Here we got uh, cosine of x over 5 minus sine x over 5. And uh, I'm going to make this simple here. You're going to separate this into two problems and take the antiderivative of each. So, what is the antiderivative of cosine? It is negative sine. Right? And leave that here. And remember, uh, you got to bring out the one fifth as well. Okay. Um, and then let's see what's the antiderivative of sine. Well, that would be negative cosine, right? So I'd make this positive. And you have cosine. Here, let me save space. Because I have to write the bring out the one fifth, right? And cosine x over five. Here you go. Look, that's pretty much it. And you got the plus c. Remember, because this is the general term. You aren't given an initial condition. And that is f of x. And that is your answer. There you go. Okay. Uh, number five, we got f of x is secant squared of 2x. So if you remember your derivatives, you can recall that the derivative of what would give you secant squared? The answer? Tangent. The derivative of tangent would give you secant squared. So that's why the antiderivative is tangent. Because if you take the derivative, or the, uh, the antiderivative of secant squared, you get tangent. If you take the derivative of tangent, you would get secant squared. That's how you know. You can check your work. So you have tangent of 2x, but knowing the chain rule, you got this guy here. And you bring out the 1 half. And then always remember that plus c. And that is your answer for uh, this problem here. So pretty much you kind of have to know some of the rules so you can see it. It's one of these things where you have to uh, memorize certain rules or understand why there are certain rules. And then you be able you begin to see it more clearly. Like this problem, for example. Let's take a look. Uh, it looks kind of complicated. So what we're going to do is... Uh, Let's make it look a little simpler because you got this going on and there's just a lot of weird stuff going. So let's separate this a little bit. We got pretty much this is the same as 1 over cosine squared x. Um, let's see. Plus, would this be... I think I'm seeing something here. Well, 1 over cosine squared x is secant squared, right? And this would be 1. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Cool. It's kind of like the first problem we had. You just had to dissect it a little bit. So, now you have the antiderivative would be tangent. Here, let me do this. So now you can take the antiderivative, and you would get tangent of x um, and the antiderivative of 1 would be just x and then you have to add the plus c and that's your 
antiderivative. Check it out. All right. Let's do one more. Uh, this one's more of a concept kind of question, but we'll see if we can tackle it. Okay. So, you're like, all right, uh, that looks weird. There's an A and an X. So, A is a constant, generally. So, just think of it as a number. Now, if you were have a number plugged in there, how would you tackle this problem? Well, you know that when you take the antiderivative of E to some power, you have 1 over, I think it's A, and E to the AX, and that's kind of the general rule for taking the derivative um, for e to the x functions. So, let's see how we can apply that for us. Okay, let's separate this a little bit. This is the same as saying 1 over a times e to the a plus 1x times x. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have to add, we have to bring, here, let me see if I can make this visual better. Um, when you take the antiderivative, you're going to have to leave this the same. Oop. You're going to have to leave this the same, but also bring it down here, right? Just like here. Um, so let's see how the A here is the A is here. Um, that's what we're going to do now. So I'll try to separate it by color. So right now you have 1 over A, but we brought down the A plus 1. See that? Okay, so then everything else stays the same. E to the a plus 1x. Right? Now, we can make this look a little nicer if you wanted to. But I think you pretty much get it. That's it. So plus c. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's our answer. So... Pretty much concept question. Just take, you know, how what you've learned and just think about a number there. If that was 3, if A was 3, you'd add 1 before, you'd have to bring it down there, right? Even with this 1 over A here. Um, and that's pretty much just a basic antiderivative problems. I hope it helped. And uh, just keep practicing, guys. Keep it up.